Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is The Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you'd like to see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Pro Cycling Manager Career Mode, so the full team version, and it's episode number 15. After the epic episode last time, uh, where we got our team all set for the upcoming season, uh, we met a huge, huge uh, sponsor objective, not only uh, getting the top 10 that was required, but taking a 1-2 finish in a race that uh, should not have been. Uh, we find ourselves in pretty good shape here with just two sponsor objectives left. One of them is substantial, uh, so it could impact positively or negatively. Uh, but we are so far into the good now that I don't anticipate we're going to see any challenges. But another win, or even a top five, might just see us hit exceptional range and get an even bigger budget increase uh, for the upcoming season. Uh, we had another, if we're looking at dates, uh, we had another top ten requirement and actually ended up with another win. It was another minor, uh, and that's part of the reason why we've continued this upswing, um, but we've had another win uh, in our last race. And that, surprisingly, was on Cobblestones, where I only have one rider with an even decent rating, uh, and we actually ended up stealing the win uh, through good, good teamwork. Uh, the pace was just never that hot, and so I was able to dominate the final 15-20 uh, kilometers uh, with good team effort and just get far enough out in front that nobody could challenge. Uh, they were too far back and we hung on. Quick glance at the calendar and what is left. Uh, so we are uh, heading into the Tour of Utah which is non-objective and very much not suited to me with all these climbs, but we do have a couple of sprints. Well, we have one sprint stage. <laughs> That's supposedly a sprint stage as well. Uh, it's gonna be a difficult one to get to the end on. And then we have the four stage tour of Colorado, same deal, so there's not gonna be much to watch uh, on either of those. We'll kind of zip right through those. Most of the work happening off camera and some youth national championships that I'll not be involved in. Our last sponsor objectives are these final two races of the year. Uh, and then we'll have some world championship races for the national team. But that is all that is left for the season on our calendar. Uh, so most of this is going to be zipped right through off camera. And you might get little bumps. Like, I'll probably just check in with you right at the end of this stage. Uh, if I happen to have somebody left that's still in the running uh, for the sprint, then that's awesome. We'll catch the last few K. And they're off. It's going to be very fast. Here we go. Tour of Utah. Final stage uh, of final part of stage one I could dock here and uh, I managed to get third place uh, so coming in right here at the end uh, no one was dropped over the top so I, I had that great opportunity to uh, fight through and lead it out and put my team in the best position and despite being outmatched here uh, with some world tour riders uh, I was still able to get in amongst them and even finish ahead of Dan McClay, edu uh, EF Education First Strat Packs uh, sprinter with my own. So uh, surprisingly, Rigoberto Uran right there in fifth uh, could very well be a favorite for the overall for the race. But there you go. Decent finish for us. Seven K left to go, and Peloton actually just split down to thirty-seven riders, 
and it is through my hard work uh, that that has happened. We're coming up on the 5K banner, and I've still got four riders left here in my breakaway group. Well, now breakaway group. It's back to 58 riders, but my lead-out train is getting the job done here pretty darn well. Uh, we were just able to get everyone over the top. But here comes the other teams with their stronger riders. But I've got Granigan starting a real lead out here. Oh, it's doing the damage to Vachtendorf, though. Gibbons is following for now. We're going to overcome them. And now into the sprint here for Gibbons. Will he have enough? Of course not. Uh, here come the real sprinters, Drucker and Dan McClay. But can we just hang on for third? No, Rigoberto Uron going over the top. Uh, Gibbons gets fourth on the stage, though. So we've got a third and a fourth in two stages when I did not expect to be in any of them. So uh, that's that's something. That is definitely something. Gibbons just missing the top three this time. If he had a little bit bigger uh, race day bonus like he had a day ago, uh, I would imagine he would have hung on for third there. Uh, Drucker and McClay, just way too strong, but uh, they got ahead of Taylor Finney. And just in case you missed them, here are the race highlights. Not a lot of sprinters here, so that actually helps us out uh, quite a bit on our chances on these stages where we do have a sprint uh, where I've got a full team at my disposal despite the weakness of our team uh, there's not a lot of actual sprinters to just fly by us now on the actual sprint stage we have 12k to go I've got my entire team at my disposal and we try again to make the perfect attack here, the perfect lead out train. And right now, unlike those previous stages, there are other teams going for it because they know that it is a sprint stage. That's hurt me a bit. Because I'm not getting a very clear lead out the way I have in other stages. But with 6k to go, I've got four riders left. Only five kilometers left. Scranica. Oh, 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 you didn't go. You didn't go. That hurt. We just dropped way back. I sent Easter. Easter didn't go. And now he's going to be done a little too early. Gibbons having to go with 3K left in this one. And he's my final lead out, man. It's a little bit early. There we go. Just a little. We're okay. Gibbons, there. Give us that lead out. Vachtendorf got dropped from Gibbons. He's going to overtake him at the end because he's got nothing left. But Dan McClay gets the win. Drucker only fifth this time. We get 8th and ninth, two riders inside the top 10, but this was definitely not the same sprint as it was uh, on the previous ones where it was not actually seen as a sprint stage. Struggled a little bit uh, this time, and unfortunate that Vachtendorf lost the wheel of Gibbons uh, there early in the final K. If he still had his wheel, uh, Vachtendorf could have been a few places higher, but we still probably were only looking at a 5th or 6th. Before I start stage number five, Garen Thomas heading to Lotto Sudal. So the exact opposite of what has happened in real life. Uh, Garen Thomas ends up winning the Tour de France over Chris Froome and reaffirms his love for the team. And then, here in the game, Chris Froome wins the Tour de France again. And Garen Thomas says, nope, that's it, I'm out of here. And he heads off to Lotto Sudal. Uh, 
Also, Lotus Udall picks up uh, Stoyven, Jasper Stoyven. <laughs> they also get Crowley's Vike. So, three big recruits all coming to Lotus Udall uh, could transform their team. They're also keeping uh, Tish Benut. So, uh, a lot of it all definitely looking stronger at this point uh, than they have been. Uh, we're going to head to stage five, which by the way, I simulated stage three, which was about in stage. We were absolutely not in it. Uh, Rigoberto Uran uh, was right there, but there was a group of about eight riders uh, that all finished together and are still in contention for the overall. Only 15 kilometers left. Final 15K here. I uh, had to start my sprint train a little bit later as I'm just forming it up uh, because you can see that there's a lot of fatigue in my side. Warren's not even able to participate. This stage for a sprint stage has been intense. Lots of short, steep climbs. Anderson's now done as well, so I'm down to final five. Granigan is in trouble here. So is Vachtendorf. Uh, ooh, 99 is not what I wanted at the moment. The finish line is getting close. The riders just passed the 10 kilometers road sign. 10k and I'm down to two riders. Uh, okay, we are gonna have just Easter. Gotta get out of here. Shoot, and I just used his gel too, so I'm not going to have it. Five k to go. This is going to be a really tough sprint for me. I'm going to have to try to get Easter. Oh boy, we are so far back now. Easter, I'm going to start pushing towards the front here. Okay, now and attack. Now it's going to be very fast. Now Gibbons over the top. He's only about seventh or eighth wheel to start here, so that hurts. A couple guys are lost before the end, but Gibbons runs out of energy. 50 meters before the finish line, so Dan McClay wins again. And I just barely cracked the top 10 in ninth place. Nothing left at the end. The race is run, but the poor souls bringing up the rear continue to cross the line. It's a bit of a knock for the morale. Uh, the last two stages here are not. Uh, going to be sprint stages. Uh, we are pretty much done with that, so that was our last opportunity to earn any points here in Utah. Uh, but whatever points we may have earned are certainly going to be more points uh, than we have picked up in other races, even races that we've won because of the higher profile. Stage 6 results. Rigoberto Uran, no surprise that he gets the win. Uh, George Simpson does manage to get in 16th, so he's in an okay place overall. Uh, he is 14th overall level with William Bartha, uh, and Anderson is just behind in 15th. Uh, but R Uran leads the overall uh, behind with McNulty, Brambilla, uh, Pantano, and then Martinez behind him. Uh, Gibbons is still 7th in the sprint jersey. Simpson and Anderson in the top 10 in the under 25s. And as a team, we are 11th. Final stage, another win for Rigoberto Uran. Uh, so that means he does get the overall. Brambilla and Egg. Uh, behind him, there's McNulty in 4th. Simpson takes 20th this time in a group that came across uh, equal on 17th. 
So for the overall, Simpson hangs on to 14th place. Uh, Nick Nolte hangs on to second with Brambilla third. Uh, Anderson drops a spot, but it is 16th overall. Final standings in the points. Gibbons takes eighth. Both riders inside the top 10 still, and the team finishes out in 10th overall. That's a look at what the final stage was. Uh, Tim Wellens is going to Trek Segafredo. Next up for us is the Colorado Classic uh, with only one sprint stage, the opening stage. Uh, so I'll see you near the end of that one. Stage one, Tour of Colorado. It's a small loop. We've been on it quite a few times and there's a definite up and down uh, rhythm to it that has affected us. The field kind of splitting up here and there. It's definitely stretched thin. Here in this uphill section though, you can definitely overdo it. Go too soon. Okay, Simpson now on the front. You can see how this run into the finish line comes in, and it's pretty steep, so we are not going to be able to go as early as we would normally go. The riders have upped the pace. Only 15 kilometers left. Just four riders left here. As we are over the top for the final time. Uh, but next time the finish line will bring us to the top once more. Or now attacking on the descent. Attack a little less hard. Wait for these guys to get up beside us. There we go. Now it's Granigan's turn, but there's only three riders left, and I'd kind of like to have three riders at the base of the climb. So I can't have Granigan push too hard the here. Is getting close to the finish line. Everybody seems to agree that the stage will be won in a sprint. Okay, we are at the bottom, at the low point here. We're going to start going up here in just a moment, and Granigan now... We'll be able to attack a little bit harder here. Five K to go. Five kilometers to the finish line. Grant against to toast. Still too early for Easter to go full out, but you can see just how thin we are at the moment. So. I wish he was at a 99, not a 94. Leads to a bit of a weaker run. But Harris already, he's too far, he's too far, he's too far, he's too far. He's still too far. 1K, 1K, now sprint! <laughs> he's got nothing left to sprint. He'll still have a decent finish. BMC getting the win with Dylan Twines. Bassetti, Rowan Dennis in third. And Harris takes eighth. So we do at least crack the top ten. Final stage here of the Colorado Classic. Getting my team set up for the sprint train. So everyone's set to a 99. And then I kind of evaluate where everyone is at. Granigan... Might be our strongest guy on the day, but Hair. Oh no, there you go. Harris is going to follow Granigan. We will get uh, Granigan following Easter. Easter's going to follow Warren. Most of this is because I know who is who in terms of strength by this point in the year. Ooh, Anderson's looking better than Simpson today. We'll get Anderson following Simpson. And Simpson following Rip. Go ahead and use his gel. 
We'll set him to a 96 and take off. We just caught the breakaway group and actually only have 13k to go. So we are going to go pretty strong out of the box except for Rim. You got to lead out a team, not lead out yourself as everybody is actually caught up. Come on, Easter. Having trouble getting to the front, and we're actually down to 10k. Okay, now we can attack. So Rim putting the pressure on. Simpson following suit. It's just seven and a half k to go. So it's going to be all 99. 5.8 There are just 5 kilometers left. Okay, 3k. I'm going into sprint with the guys that are left. And he moves on to the attack. It could be decisive. And now Easter, now we're going to actually get into my speed, guys. But here is already Team Rally coming up beside us. Grant again now. Pulling out Harris. We might have it. We might have it. Oh, yes, yes. Tour of Colorado. Colorado Classic, now known as. And John Harris hangs on for the win. Grant again, even with the lead out in sixth place. What a brilliant job by the sprint train uh, to get us through with those 99s. We got ahead of guys enough to uh, squeeze one out. That's going to be worth some valuable, valuable points in the Super Prestige uh, for the season as this is a much higher classification uh, win than we've had at any other point this year. Harris came into it on pretty good form on the day with that plus one. And that really, really helped. We were not having a good race up until that point. Uh, so now I've only got two races left on the year, and they are both one-day classics. Uh, they are both objectives. One, a pretty high-level objective, and one very low-level objective. Uh, but there's also the World Championships for the national team still to go. I'm going to try to squeeze all of that in, those four races still within this episode. After stealing that stage win with uh, John Harris, Rowan Dennis takes the overall with Daniel Martinez, Dylan Toynes, uh, Brandon McNulty, and Ruben Guerrero as the top five. My highest place rider, George Simpson in 23rd, a minute 13 down. With the stage win, John Harris takes 6th in the sprint jersey. Simpson takes 11th in the under 25s. And as a team, we finish in ninth place. Also, before we move forward anymore, a little bit of news. Anderson on his fitness peak here the last couple days. Team looking for Pro Continental. Dylan Toynes staying put. Roglic, that's the big news that I was looking for. Uh, Roglic going to Team Sky and Sepp Van Mark going to Quick Step. Uh, and Nikki Terpstra going to EF Education first while Yates and Kreutzker are staying put. Uh, we're going to take a quick glance uh, at the standings and see how the outlook for next season is currently let's go uh, world tour this point same 18 on top with dimension data just hanging on to the back end uh, as for continental pro wanting group gobert very close to overtaking uh, dimension data in the projection for next season uh, potentially getting promoted my other playthroughs that has happened And 
let's see here. Okay, there are seven teams currently in the Continental Pro that look to be relegated. And I'm still the highest Continental team right now in projection. So of seven teams moving in, uh, I am the highest projected at this point in time. So it is looking that I will be Continental Pro next season, at least as of the 19th of August. Now, quick look at the teams. Team Sky running away with it this year. Want to group Gobert leading over Kofidis, but that's pretty close at the top. Uh, Corindon with the uh, Vanderpools uh, have done quite well this season. Uh, but from their projection, I'm assuming that at this point they have not signed. I haven't seen anything on them. Uh, I'm still 17th in the Continental. Or I am 17th now. Actually, that's a lot higher, I think, than I was before. I was down around 27th. And there you go. Super Prestige. I have moved up to 62nd here in the month of August, up nine spots. I have 409 points as of right now. It's not a crazy amount more than where I was, but it's certainly more than where I was before. About 50 points higher, I think. Before heading into my last large objective of the year, you can see the Bucks County Classic here is uh, third in that top five realm. Quick update on some news. As time has definitely passed, we are now well into September, a full week in. Uh, Anderson, who was on a fitness peak, it ends the day we go to the Bucks County Classic, so terrible timing on that one. Uh, Michael Woods is heading to Sunweb, then Air to Lotto Sudal, so another writer going there. Uh, Bowman, who I had offered a contract to, was in negotiations with, but couldn't get him uh, to sign and wasn't willing to go any higher, has re signed with Lotto and El Jumbo. Uh, team advances, nothing involving us. And where we happen to be is Wraith is 76th overall. He's also our highest in Super Prestige. Uh, we are 19th in the Continental Rankings at the moment. And 63rd in the Super Prestige. Uh, Granigan moved up 247 places. And we're right about where we were a month ago, uh, despite a much lighter schedule. Uh, bank balance is a bit healthier. Uh, after successful runs in Colorado and Utah. Jonathan Brown is back as of uh, about five days ago and training and will be racing with us. And I have a new sponsorship offer uh, for bike frames. So before we get into the race, let's go check that out. Uh, so as of right now, uh, all of my current uh, sponsors for next season are actually out. So, uh, Neil Pride, I have no idea what the offer may be or not be, and I'm kind of afraid not to uh, sign now that it might be gone uh, if I wait. It's only a one-year uh, contract offer, so... I'm not going to sign just yet. We'll we'll wait and see uh, what, if anything, I may end up getting uh, on offer. But let's go ahead and head to the race again. It's a three and a half star, and the objective is a top ten. But you look from the profile, it is a looping climb six times 
that we're going to have to get up and over uh, to squeeze into that top 10, and I am very nervous about that uh, as my team is not built for this. I've got my best hill guys, though. And I'll do everything I can to get them there. Uh, but that final climb, the finish line is at the top of that climb, and it's going to make it that much tougher to get there. It's not the big teams, at least. So in terms of competition, competition's a bit less. Uh, the highest ranked guys you can see there are uh, not that great. I think I just saw two names flashing in just inside the uh, top 10 favorites. Alright, well I'm going to skip forward uh, to where we begin those looping climbs. So I'll see you back in a moment. All right, we are just about to hit the climbs. It's a 5K climb, it looks like. And it's pretty steep, 8.5%, 9%, 10 10% there for a moment. We're not done climbing yet, either. I am on speed, too, at the moment, by the way. It just hits 10% and just before the top it gets almost to 9% again. The steepest is at least at the base. There is the finish line that we just went over. It's not as steep right at the top so that that certainly helps. But that was one time over the climb and look at the damage it did to the entire team. So the pace is high. Uh, Peloton just split but it came back together here on the descent but I fully expect a small group finish and a difficult sprint, a very difficult sprint at the end. Uh, we have recovered this time over. So I'm at 285 now. In terms of water, I've just kind of reached that point where I could probably get water one final time here pretty soon. Breakaway group of six riders, uh, they are just under two minutes ahead, and on the climb we are definitely gaining on them. So I don't think they'll stay away. Now at an 85, you need an 86 here. Okay, there's the top. Isn't it Garrison that he's protecting? No? Oh, I've got it the other way around. But I did that on purpose. Uh, Garrison is the weakest climber here. Uh, so even though he's a sprinter, he's not going to be a sprinter today, especially because he's the only one on a negative race day condition. Uh, I should have done the water that time on the top, but we'll do it this time. Just before the top, I'll send Simpson to get water. Uh, let's... Put everybody on an 88 sure. now. The rider will have to burn some to get Thank back you for not being one of my guys. Alright, we are struggling up the climb this time. You can see I'm going to start to lose guys here at some point. Six riders still away. Under a minute now. Only a few riders are capable and of following the very Simpson, okay, okay go ahead and go get water. Hopefully I didn't go too soon, but he's far enough ahead. Yeah, 1k to go to the top here. Don't get too far back. Don't get too far back, Simpson. You should already be grabbing water. Let's go. Hand up, hand up. There's the top. There we go. Hand up. He's got water. Mmm. -hmm. Feel just split though. Feel just split. He's still working. Oh, Simpson. Simpson! Now he's caught in no man's land. And didn't get water to the Peloton. 
on his own now, given Chase. 40 riders left ahead after that split that caught him out. He's just about to make contact with the group, but I don't think he's going to get water to him. He's still trying to get water to him, but now he's going to get, he's going to fall back here. Yep, now he just gave up. Okay, so set him to auto. We didn't get water, which is a little disturbing. Set this to an 89 now. Got six guys left. Now the nice thing is whoever goes to get water this time, I'm going to slow this down. Uh, ouch, my three guys shielding are all pretty much done, which means I'll be down to three guys here in a little bit. Rim is doing the best of these, so just before the top, there's the 1k to go. Send him back for water. It's a small group this time. Anderson, Garrison right at the back. Rim, please tell me you've got... Oh no, another split. I don't think he's going to... He still hasn't even gotten water, actually. Garrison, lead him out. Oh, Rim's attacking, trying to get water up there. Doing the same thing that Simpson did, and it's not going well for him. He's made it back to the group. Oh, is he going to do it? He's got everybody but Anderson now. And Easter. <clears throat> Garrison's made it back on. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, and we got water to everyone. Uh, I'm going to pause there for a second. 31 riders were about to start the climb again. Um, I need to reset things, though. Wraith and Easter are protected by Rib and Anderson Brown so Garrison protect Brown I know you're not gonna have much left but final two times over the climb and I'm just hanging on there's only 31 riders left here uh, the breakaway group is now totally caught so there we go Garrison Oop. yeah Simpson's already way back Garrison's He's about to get the dropped the team sponsor won't be disappointed. Set him to auto. There's Rim, but great job there. Great job by getting water to the group. He's done. And then there was four. Uh, Anderson still protecting Wraith. Brown is almost done. I'd like you to protect Easter. However, as far back as you are, it's not going to go well unless I get you at the right time. No, don't. Ah, don't do it that way. Don't accelerate like that. Okay, Easter and Wraith are all that I have left here as Brown is kind of hanging on. He's about to get dropped. Hopefully a bunch of others get dropped. There's still 1k to go. So if we get down to a group of 10, there you go. One rider off the front, Stedman, and 10. There's our chances of a top finish. Now, let's compare these guys. Uh, Easter, 71 on the climbing, 66 acceleration. Wraith is having a really good day uh, and looking stronger than Easter. So let's go ahead and use Easter to protect Wraith. And I've got two guys left and 12 riders. So all we have to do is beat one of these 12 riders. And then I've got Brown and Anderson. Anderson's going to protect Brown just in case as a fallback. Here we go. This is it. 7K. Uh, Easter's the shielding guy, so Easter, use your gel now. Uh, Anderson, you're the shielding guy. I want you to use your gel now.
five kilometers to the finish line. Somebody's All right, here we go. The step. final climb. 88. I'm going to try to accelerate here. It's back together. So 12 riders here at the front. Rally's got a couple riders. We've got a couple riders. Now it's 11. And he's not getting back up. It looks like he'll have to abandon the race. Okay. Let's check back here now. Anderson is hanging on. Brown, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set you to an 87. Alright, here we go. Easter. Doing the work. Doing the work. Under 3K. Now I don't have to win this thing. Easter's hanging on. I'm going to wait for Easter. Set that to an 88. It's okay if Joyce goes on to win. We've just learned of a fall. Let's hope that all okay, will get up Wraith on his own. His but we are comfortably into the top three at the moment. Oh, Brown's not going to have much. Uh, definitely use your gel. Let's drop that to, say, an 85. Okay, Easter's dropping off the back. But he's currently in fourth place. And now... Uh, second to auto. Here goes Wraith in third place. And sprint, 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 sprint. Probably third. Looks like he's going to get third, but that's what we needed. That's a top three finish. Wraith gets third. The objective was tenth. We easily made it. Here's Easter. Give it your all, son. Give it your all. Hang on for tenth. And he does. I get two riders inside the top ten. Anderson right behind Brown as they come in together. Uh, they're still looking at top 20 finishes, the both of them. 16 and 17. Well done. Okay, and Rim, Garrison behind him. They're outside of the top 20. Oh, this is going to be a good day. Good day. No win, but a top three on another major objective well above what the objective stated. Uh, this maybe can boost us into a higher and here are a few of the key moments. Sorry, hey, achievement unlocked, 10 objectives, nice. This may boost us into a salary bump for next year. This is what I'm looking for here. So we get third. Uh, yes, Carpenter and Joyce, Rally, they were, they were the stronger on the day, but that is a Continental Pro team. We are not. Uh, I am not a climbing team. I mean, that was a hill climber of 65 taking third place. Easter, great job uh, getting to the end there and getting Wraith halfway up and putting him in position to uh, claim third place. Uh, and Anderson and Brown, great job to get those two to the final climb. Or thereabouts. Okay, now, at the moment, the team is very thrilled with that, but it always takes a big dip the next day as they reevaluate everything else on the year. We'll see if it stays in the blue, or whether it drops back down to the high end of green, which is where it was. Either a good or great evaluation. What's held us back on that all year long is I don't have Dutch and Belgian riders, which I've fixed that for next season. That's what the sponsor wants. That's what the sponsor gets. But they didn't get it this year. It's making it really hard. So what is it going to be? What is it going to be? We're still in the blue. We are still in the blue. We have one race left. It is a sponsor objective as well. 
and it's a top 10 objective, and you could see that we're in for another climb. I'm going to have the same guys in the race, same seven riders in that next race, and if they could get a top 10 on the race we just had, I think they can get a top 10 on this upcoming race as well. Uh, hopefully. I would imagine if I fail to get a top 10, as close as we are to green, it would drop us back down. At this point, winning it means nothing, or just getting a top 10 essentially means nothing. But to keep the extra uh, bonus evaluation-wise, I think we're going to have to get at least a top 10. We don't need more than that. We don't need to raise it any further. We've hit exceptional. We are uh, set to get another 6000 per month next year than we are currently. Which actually would give me the opportunity, if I so choose, to try to go after another writer. I mean, we've got another 6000 in budget, uh, but I could save that for staff. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the team I've got coming up for next year. Uh, Bowman would have been maybe nice to go after, but that's not happening. I suppose I could look at the uh, youth development and see if there's someone else. Uh, I want to wait until after the 16th, though, if we are going to sign someone, to make sure that we uh, are going to get that increase. Heading into my final race of the year. Yes, I have two world championship races. I'm going to end up not airing those. Uh, there's not enough time left, and the, there's no strong riders from the U.S. right now. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bypass that one. I uh, really apologize if that's something you're looking forward to seeing uh, to fit everything in for this season-ending episode. Uh, I need to wrap it up uh, at the end of this one. We're also only going to catch the uh, final couple climbs here as well. But before we jump in, uh, one quick thing to look at, prize money. Uh, we did well in the race, but it was not a high-paying one. Uh, but we do have some additional sponsorship offers for next season. Uh, we've got uh, Novatech for wheels, and they're offering uh, a couple-year deal. Uh, no Roval also and Team Cervelo uh, have come in with an offer, uh, which I've never heard of Neil Pride. I apologize again if uh, that's someone you know, or especially if you happen to work for them. But uh, yeah, Cervelo has... Uh, come in, and that's certainly a bike that I'm familiar with. And Easter has hit his fitness peak. Others have lost theirs, like Rim, uh, as we head into this final race. This is a race that I figured would have no impact, as it's only a half-star objective. But as we are right on the border uh, between success and failure uh, for the highest level of being at a super success right now, uh, I don't want to see that fall uh, so, to get there, we're going to need to get a top 10 in this race. So we really, really need to get after this objective uh, of super success. Alright, so Peloton beginning to shrink. Uh, this is the third to last time uh, up over the climb. And we are just hitting the top here. Simpson on his way back to get water. Brown has just been dropped. Uh, so he is now out. So him to automatic. And Simpson here in the back having still actually still waiting for water. Don't like the length of the wait uh, because it could put him on the climb again before he gets back. And technically he just got water, but he's been separated from the group. I have feeling though that these guys will remake contact hopefully here in just a moment. Simpson, don't push too hard. Too fast. Off on his own, back into the peloton, but now he's hurting. AI doesn't have a lot of logic on the fetch water. Uh, I would love to see them work on it for next year. I've, I've mentioned it in other episodes, or at least in my other series, uh, that I would love to see uh, in next year's edition. I would love to see an evolution of uh, fetching water bottles. 
you know, from like a bulging jersey on the back where you're carrying a bunch of bottles in animation where you're actually handing it off to other writers uh, would be really neat. Okay, so Peloton is down to 30 writers. Breakaway Group is three. And we can see that uh, as we are about to begin the climb again, even at an 87, uh, we're struggling to keep the pace here. Uh, with Brown being dropped, I need to get Simpson on uh, Garrison here. Now that he's done with his duties getting water. Breakaway Group has been caught. Uh, Raymond Anderson are done. Set them both to auto. And now there's four. Uh, Simpson on Garrison. I've got Easter and Wraith. Uh, we're going to do the same thing we did the last time with Easter protecting Wraith. Uh, that was how they finished the other one. Still got Garrison with them. Simpson's about to get dropped. A lot of his work went into getting water there, so that's what did him in ultimately. He was that fourth man anyway, that's why he was in that role to get water, while the others were providing protection. Now, uh, Garrison actually is, well, no, Easter's... It's interesting, I have three here this time. There's still one climb to go, 20 riders left in contention. We're going to speed things up during the descent as I don't expect much to happen here. We'll set these guys to 90. We'll slow it back down when we go to ascend one final time. 20k to go now. It's also not a finish on the top, so allowing more for the sprint, uh, giving me a better chance on that part. All right, and we've got a little bit of recovery as well, which is nice. Yes, you are set to auto. Uh, the chase group is a minute and a half down, so we are not going to see Simpson again. Yeah, I need to get those notifications turned off. Are entering the last 15 kilometers of the stage. It's a work email account. <laughs> Okay, here's an attack from Cabo, and there's the response. There's no response. Sunderland. Sunderland's responding. 18 riders now, one out the back. 17 riders now, two out the back, and we're just about to the top. I will form a sprint train once we get there. Okay, falls flat. 16 riders. It is 30 seconds to cab out. But now I can form a sprint train with what I have left of these three. All three are in good shape. Wraith's going to go in the back. Uh, I think Easter's going to go out front. So follow Garrison, you're going to follow Easter, Easter, I'm going to take that gel, and then here in a moment, uh, we will begin an attack. We've got 10k to go. I've only got three riders, so I can't attack too early, but a lot of this is downhill. Okay, so let's go 94. Make sure we're actually fully formed up. And off the front, Garrison's still kind of caught out a little bit right now. Uh, we still have one rider away. There we go. Now we're moving to the front, Easter. K96. Okay, we're gaining on him. Garrison, go ahead and use we're your gel. Five kilometers. Four and a half K to go. Easter, great job from Easter here, hanging on. We've just about caught the breakaway van. And Garrison, give it a go. Wraith, use your... Oh, no, 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 too soon. 99, just 99, just 99. There we go. And they keep on attacking. Anyone that's low on gas definitely won't be able to keep up. Okay, now it's time for Wraith to come over the top around this corner. 
Boy, not a very good sprint. Awkward sprint here. Awkward sprint, and he's going to run out of juice just before the finish line. Just before the finish line, he's going to get passed all the way to third or fourth. Third. He hangs on for third, but that's still, that's what we needed. We just needed a top ten. Not only did we get it, but we managed to get third. Uh, a little bit of an uphill right there at the finish, which you don't see on the... Well, if I would have zoomed in, I would have seen it. And we actually passed it a bunch of times, but I thought that had been the uh, start line, not the finish line. Uh, anyway, third and sixth. Uh, we also managed to get 15th. That'll secure things. Uh, I'm going to see you back on the main screen so we can get a final uh, evaluation of the season, final points total, and see whether we are still in contention for a spot in Pro Continental. And then also I might sign another writer uh, as I'll have another 6000 per month at my disposal. I don't necessarily need to sign someone at that amount as I think I was actually a little over on my spending before. So I might have four or five thousand to spend. Uh, we'll see if that's worth it to get one more. Alright, so we're back at the main screen. Uh, it's the day after. And yes, sponsor confidence is high enough uh, that we will not only see a six thousand increase but we should see a twelve thousand increase to our budget. Uh, the results for the La Vuelta, the Vuelta España. Uh, Chris Froome has won it again. Uh, Nairo Quintana and Tom Dumoulin uh, rounded out the podium. Uh, he took the uh, points and the mountains jersey as well. And he's now alongside Hino. And we got a small payday for that, but that didn't matter. Uh, the big thing was hitting that objective, so yes, we have finalized as a super success for the year. Uh, you can see that four out of the five main objectives were all hit. Uh, and our 48000 per month budget will go up to 60000 uh, next year. Uh, the final results were maxed out. Registered riders and squad were a bit low. Uh, but again, those came down to a few key things. Uh, that stage win in Colorado Classic definitely helped us. All right, so equipment, uh, we have a couple of things offered. Uh, and actually, this is all that's left now. So uh, a couple of the other offers are gone. So I'm going to go ahead and get these signed uh, while they're still available. I don't have a group set. We'll see if something comes up for that. Right, on to the results and see if we still are where we hope to be for next year. I'm not as high as I was. 44th, and we are still in projection for Continental Pro, but only barely right now. We are right on the edge, uh, the final two spots into the Continental Pro. So uh, I very much do need to look into signing one more uh, decent rider to boost the team if we're going to be competing in Continental Pro next season as teams continue to add to their rosters, and I have not done so since August 1st. As a team, my final totals uh, in Continental, we drop to 19th. And I think we'll hang on to that. It looks like we're not going to drop any further. Maybe 20th at worst, but we should be inside the top 20 for the year. And in Super Prestige, 
62nd is where we are with 431 points, uh, which gives me a grand total in the game decathlon of 43 points, just a simple division of 10 to determine that. And that's out of 1,000. Uh, so if we're taking uh, potential totals here, right? Uh, Team Sky actually would have hit 1,000. Movie star, not that far behind. So if I can get to world tour level, if I can have the kind of success that Chris Froome had this year uh, with at least two grand tours, one, I know he won the Tour de France, I know he won the Vuelta España, I'm not sure if he got all three. Uh, I suppose one way to look at that would be the individual. And let's see if Chris Froome... Who has, who's at an 80 right now. Uh, let's see. Tour de France. Yes, he won that. Vuelta España. He won that. Uh, Torino. Criterium de Dauphiné. He won that. Tour of Oman. He won. Tour of the Alps. He won. Vuelta a Burgos. He won. Uh, but he did not compete in the Giro d'Italia this year. Uh, but he got two out of three Grand Tours, and that is what ultimately put his team at such a dominant position uh, where I would have maxed out 1,000 points. So... Uh, it is possible. It can be done. You can see that just a single team has done it. Uh, but for me, this year, being at that continental level with such a weak team, this is actually a definite success. Because look how many teams there are uh, below us. I mean, look how many teams got one point on the entire year. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to try to get one or two more guys signed here uh, on the cheap, off camera to do enough to help keep us uh, in the Continental Pro for next season, but it looks like we're going to be right on the back edge of that. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to do it for this episode and this season, our first season here in this career mode. I'm Decathlon Gamer, and remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.